Pawn c4, pawn f6. This is the mouse slip that I made in the opening in a game that I played recently online. Uh, I, I was intending to play knight f6 and slipped with f6, which is obviously a horrible move. But I made it work. To justify f6, I play e5, because f6 supports the e5 pawn. g3, bishop b4. My idea is to exchange the bishop for the knight, and then put my pawns on dark squares to play in like kind of a Dutch style, except with f5, I have e5, and try to justify the f6 move by creating a barrier on the dark squares. Quickly, before we continue with the video, if you enjoy my content, please drop a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Trying to hit 100 subscribers soon. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, but for now, let's just get back to the video. Enough of my shameless self promo. So we have bishop b4. I was expecting knight d5 just attacking my bishop. Attack, attack, I can't draw arrows, attacking my bishop, in which case I would probably play knight c6 to defend, because I, like I said, want this trade. But instead we have bishop g2, and I just take the opportunity to take, because I don't want to give my opponent the opportunity to save the knight by putting it on d5. So I take, we have b takes opening up the B file for my opponent, and I go D6. So, because I now have my bishop out and traded off, I can afford to just whack all my pawns on dart squares and try and create a barrier against my opponent. This does, however, mean his light square bishop is very strong on this diagonal because I'm, I'm not really protecting my light squares with my pawns. D4 is played. Obviously, I don't take this. So if I take this, my opponent gets to undouble his pawns. He gets complete central control. And the only good thing about my position, my e5 pawn, is gone. This is the only thing that's good in my position. So I play knight c6. If my opponent takes me, then I'm probably going to take back with the f pawn. And again, this justifies the f6 move now. And I'm good. My opponent's got doubled isolated pawns. So, all's well. Instead he goes e3, support. What is happening with these arrows? This is going to be an arrowless video because it is not cooperating. My opponent goes e3 to protect his pawn. And it makes sense because his bishop can't actually come out this way because of my pawn wall. So I go knight g to e7 which helps to defend some of the light squares in my position. We have knight e2, castle, castle, and bishop g4. Here I was kind of hoping that my opponent would push me back like this, and I'd be able to drop my bishop back to f7 to monitor the weak light squares in my position. Again, because I put my pawns on dark squares. I can't just go to e6 though, because d5 forks my minor pieces, whereas if my bishop's on f7, then d5 gets played and I can just retreat the knight. My opponent isn't so kind though, and he plays bishop a3, and I can't, I can't make this trade because then my opponent has the bishop pair, but more importantly, I lose a key defender of my light squares. And like I said before, with my pawns on dark squares, my light squares are very weak. So, bishop g4, bishop a3. I go king h8, just stepping off of the diagonal, because there's potential queen b3 moves, or bishop to d5, just a preparatory move. Rook b1, attacks b7. So I go rook b8, which also steps off of this bishop's diagonal, which means that my knight my knight can move in the future. h3, bishop h5. Again, I want to play this plan of bringing my bishop back. g4. I actually go to g6, just so I get a tempo on this rook. And I force the rook to move. And then I go knight a5. 
my idea is to attack the c4 pawn, obviously. And with my bishop on g6, the queen can't go to d3 to defend because my bishop my bishop controls that square. So my opponent plays the only real good move, queen a4, which defends the c4 pawn and attacks my knight. So I go b6, which is the only good move to defend my knight. If I play c6, then my knight is defended by my queen, but it gets stranded because it has no way back. So b6, c5, great move again, the only real good move for my opponent, trying to break apart my dart squared structure. If I lazily take with the b pawn, my knight hangs, and if I take with the c pawn, then he takes back, and my position is just kind of compromised, because I can't take this, again, my knight hangs, and my knight can't go to c6 because the queen and the bishop both monitor that square. And I've only got my other knight helping to defend it. So I opt for bishop to e8 attacking the queen. And after queen b4 I play knight e to c6 attacking the queen. Lending some support to my knight. So he takes it. Here apparently I should take with the knight. And after a move like queen a4, I can open up a discovery. So my opponent would probably play queen c4, and I can put my knight back onto a5, according to the engine. I instead take with the bishop, because my logic is that these squares are so weak now. I, I, I mentioned before how putting all my pawns on dark squares le weakened my light squares. Well, my opponent's done exactly the same thing. And with these advanced kingside pawns as well, his light squares around his king are incredibly weak. So I take with the bishop. This is bad because this pawn just hangs. He's got two defenders on his pawn now, and I've only got two attackers. So instead of taking back, and after queen takes d6, I can't take because then my rooks get forked. Apparently I actually have knight c4 forking these, which I, I, I did not see. So instead I didn't take, and I played f5. Because my idea is, with my opponent having the advanced kingside pawns and the very weak light squares, I need to try and open the kingside up ASAP. So d takes c7. I have to react by taking, and then queen d6, again, the same idea after bishop takes d6, where knight c4 is the only move, which I didn't notice. It's hard to see that because the queen defends c4 at the moment. Even though I know the queen's going to move, in my head, the c4 square is kind of off limits, right? So after queen d6, I go queen f7, which gets out of the way of the queen trade and sets up attacking ideas on the king side. So queen takes e5. Here, I did see knight c4. I did see this move, attacking the rook and the bishop and the queen. But I wasn't, I wasn't wholly convinced after this, because my opponent just gets a massive pawn center he manages to defend g3, he's going to play e4, and his pawns are coming down the board. I am up a piece, but I'm down three pawns. I thought my opponent gets an awful lot of compensation in this position. So instead, I take on g4, with the idea of putting my queen onto f3, and mating my opponent on the light squares. So after bishop takes f8, I can't rush with queen f3 because I hang mate, so I have to take back first, which means I am down an exchange. And my opponent plays rook b1, which just baffled me. I mean, technically I'm threatening knight c4, the fort, the queen, and the rook, but I thought that the queen could just move. And then, 
you know, I can't really trade the queens. So maybe I have to go to e7. And the queen could just probably take. So I didn't like this. But my opponent just plays rook b1. Which after queen f3 just blunders a double attack. Because I'm threatening mate and I'm threatening the knight. And if the knight tries to move uh, to cover h1. Then g2 hangs. So he has to play queen h2 to defend the mating squares. And I just pick the knight up. This means that I have two pieces for a rook. And my pieces are a lot better than his rooks. Namely this bishop, which just absolutely kills my opponent. Here I'm completely winning. My opponent plays h takes g4. I play queen takes g4. Check. The only move for my opponent is queen to g3. And I just go back to e4, which threatens mate on h1. My opponent goes f3, and I take on e3 with check. And here my opponent resigns, because all he can do is really block, and then I'm just going to pick up all the pawns. His king is so weak that I'm going to trade the queens a bit. I'm, I'm, I'm going to force a trade of queens for him to stop checkmate, and then I've just got two pieces for a rook. And I'm going to have extra pawns. And it's going to be a very easy conversion. And that's if I don't mate him. So after queen takes e3 check. My opponent resigns. And I win the game. Which started like this. I won playing f6 on the first move. Ben Feingold would be furious. But with that. That's the end of the video. If you enjoyed please like and subscribe. Really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one.